Hey guys, today I'm going to do a video and show you how to swap out the handlebars on your bobber. Uh, I tipped my bike over here in the garage a while back and it was minor, but it did bend my handlebars. So I'm going to be swapping out the drag bars with the same drag bars. I'll be going into great detail to give you some points that may help you out if you decide to do this. So without further ado, here we go. All right, guys, so some of the tools, or I guess all the tools you're going to need is a 12 millimeter wrench. This is going to be if in case you need to rotate the banjo uh, to clear your uh, headlight bezel. You're going to need a T25, little star bit right there. You're going to need a 5 mil Allen wrench and a 6 mil Allen wrench. And you may need some metal grinding compound, fine grade. Now what that does is, if for some reason you've stripped out any of your holes for the Allen wrench, or you go to tighten it and it strips, you put this inside the hole of the, the uh, bolt or nut that's stripped, and because it's got a, a, a like a sand compound to it, um, it will fill in the spaces basically to make the Allen wrench larger, and that will help remove any rounded off or stripped out bolts. Uh, like I said, you shouldn't have to use it, but if you do, then that is what you will need. And of course, you'll need a towel to lay over the tank so you don't scratch it. So here are the bars, the drag bars that I got from IndianAftermarket.com. Now, when I received these, what I did notice that the bends right here were nowhere near as angled as the original ones I got. So there's definitely a lack of consistency in their production because it's the exact same part, so it should be the same. However, I'm gonna show you what these look like. So most tapered bars, they simply just taper off. Well, this is a one inch bar, and then as you can see here, it's a 7 8 insert aluminum into the one inch bar. Now, if we look on the end, you can see where they drilled it out and it's threaded to accept your bar and mirrors. So that's the Indian aftermarket drag bars, what they look like before installed. All right, so the next step, we're gonna just remove this. That's the six mil Allen wrench. And I've already broken this loose a little bit. Now people always ask about the mirrors and where I bought them. So as you can see right here, that was the original stock one. I just hacked it in half. This was a cheap eBay mirror, 20 bucks, 30 bucks maybe for the pair. And all I did was unscrew it from the original mount, drilled a hole in here, threaded it in there, the threading ended up breaking loose, so I had, uh, used some JB Weld and wait for it to harden and paint it black. And again, someone's commented in the past, why would you use JB Weld for light projects like that that you're not going to put any pressure on? There's nothing wrong with that at all. Sand it down, paint it, and that's how you make the bar and mirror short. We're going to do the same thing for the other side. You can use your imagination for that. Now, on each side, before you remove the brake and the clutch lever, you're going to see these two uh, sleeves that you're going to need to remove. Um, this is for your control module on each side. So disconnect those. Don't yank them out. Just sort of grab them up closer to where they connect and just sort of wiggle and pull back. All right, you're going to do that on both sides. All right, now with the 5 mil Allen wrench, we're going to remove the two on the inside of the clutch lever. And again, this is where you would use that compound if you had stripped these out. And of course, if it rounds off one time, don't keep doing it, just stop immediately before you make it worse. So I'm gonna back these off and then you're gonna see something I had done when I installed these. Now, when I originally put them on, whether people are messing with them or you got someone riding your bike or you ride it yourself and you've tightened these down all the way, but the clutch lever rotates. So this is what I did, and I'll show you here in a second. As I take the back plate off here, you can see that little hole that I drilled, and then what I did was, you see the little top part that's on there? If I can hold it still for a second. 
So basically I just drilled a hole and made a little uh, pin in there. So once it's clamped on, there's no way that it can rotate. Now someone had commented in a video, well, if you did it right, you shouldn't have to do that. Well, there's a lot of things you shouldn't have to do. Um, but these are not OEM handlebars, they're aftermarket. When you build anything, whether it's a car or a bike or anything, there's modifications that you have to make to make it work. So there's no right or wrong in doing it as long as you do it safely, effectively, and the key thing is that it works. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the brake side. Now on this one, I'm pretty sure that I didn't use a pin like I did on that other side, and I, I tell you the truth, I can't be sure. I'm gonna find out here in a second, because I don't think I had a problem with this one slipping. Now remember when you're removing these, make sure that you hold your clutch and your brake in place. And then when they do come off, you can just release the clutch and lever and let it fall to the side gently. I wouldn't say that you have to use a towel, not for this part at least anyway. Okay, so I didn't have to use one as you can see. And again, at this point, we're just gonna pull it off, gently rest it to the side. All right, by the way, when you take your uh, brake assembly off, this is the banjo. Now, if you've seen the movie Deliverance, you'll know why they call that a banjo, because it's shaped like one. And that's the 12 millimeter. Now, we didn't need to adjust that now to remove it, but when you install it on your new bars, this has a tendency to hit this. So all you're gonna do is ever so slightly loosen it, and you probably will get a little drip of uh, brake fluid. Don't worry about it. Just rotate it just enough that when you mount it to the bars that it's gonna clear your headlight bezel, then tighten it back up. All right, so now I'm gonna give you some tips at this point. We're gonna obviously remove the uh, four six mil uh, Allen wrench bolts right here to remove the Speedo, and we're gonna rest that gently here on the tank. And then at this point, this is where we start removing the handlebars, but here's a tip. You'll notice that your cables go into your control module here on the brake side. There's no slack. So when you hold the bars, you're not going to grab this assembly after removing the screws here, and you're not going to pull it away. You're going to remove the four screws, one here, one here, one here. You're going to take the screws out, but you're still going to hold this assembly together so it doesn't separate. And while you're holding it together, you're going to feed the handlebars out that way. That way you're not putting any uh, pressure or unnecessary tension on your uh, wiring harnesses and cables. Okay. So again, we're going to move the four screws here, separate them and pull the handlebars that way. And you'll see here in a second. Okay. Before we go to the uh, brake side, we're going to do the clutch side here. And with the T25, we're going to remove the two screws on the back cover here. And what you want to do is hold the uh, assembly together as you remove the screws. Don't worry, there's no springs, there's nothing going to jump out at you and you're going to have to try and figure out, you know, where in the heck it came from. And then usually what I try to do is just uh, remove them from the handlebar and then put it back together until we get the new bars installed. I may or may not do that. So let's see, again, it's gonna separate. I'm just gonna pull it down and I'm gonna immediately put it back together and put the screws in place. Again, just to hold it for a while. If I can get it to cooperate with me. There we go, and I'm gonna do the same here. Okay, remember when I drilled that hole for the, uh, the clutch lever? Well, it's the same principle. If you look on the factory control module, or whatever you wanna call it, you see that top stud, or you call it a nipple, whatever you want, sticking down. Well, obviously, if you don't drill a hole into your new bars to accommodate that, it's not gonna close properly. 
So that's why you're gonna to have to drill in to the aluminum to make that fit properly. And the best thing that you can do is put some uh, red paint or something that's gonna mark that. And then once you line it up on the bar, it's gonna leave that exact red spot on the bar and you'll know exactly where to drill. All right, now one of the toughest and annoying parts is to remove your grip. Now those are usually glued onto the bars, your factory bars. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do it. You can get a long flat extension uh, blade and just sort of pry it in there all the way around to break the glue free. Um, I've seen people do that to start with and then blast the end there with compressed air and it just you know, expands everything or you can sit and just twist it. Now, as I twist it, you're gonna hear the old glue. And it's good to do this while the bars are still mounted rather than fighting it while it's between your legs there. So you could hear that break free. That was the glue cracking. And now I've just removed it. All right, guys, now before removing this side right here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove the uh, Speedo and rest it right here. Again, the six mils on here, I tried mine with the Allen wrench, didn't work, so just gonna use the equivalent on a socket. I can't imagine why those would be so tight. A little bit of sarcasm there for you. Just gonna break them all loose first. So I can remove them in an even manner. And of course now your bars are going to want to droop down a little bit. So just be conscious of what they're doing. When you do put your handlebars back on, um, don't go ahead and tighten everything down. You kind of want everything just sort of, you know, slightly loose because you are going to have to make some adjustments, you know, to get everything right. You're going to sit on the bike, obviously, and put them in a comfortable position. And if it doesn't feel right, you can rotate them up for a better angle. And again, make sure that that banjo is not hitting the headlight bezel. So again, get the position where you want it first before you start cranking down on everything. If you are gonna drill the holes, which you're gonna to have to on this side, just go ahead and get your bars up where they need to be first. Uh, don't worry about drilling holes before you mount them because like I did, as you can see on that side, you'll make a mistake. All right, so when we remove this, there's a little bit of play or slack just to rest that aside and we'll go to the next step. Okay, before I go any further, just wanna show you where I'm at. Now, as you can see, the handlebar is clear and free. There's nothing on that side attached as far as cables. So that's completely free to be lifted out the way. I've gone ahead and removed two of the T25s and I'm gonna remove these two. And again, when I do, I'm only gonna separate this just enough to pull the bar out of the way. Again, I'm gonna hold this still and I'm gonna remove that bar and when I pull it out, just be close by where you can lay it on the ground. I'm not gonna chuck it on the ground. Uh, I'll keep it as a backup if anything and just rest it to the side. And then one, while you're holding this, you're gonna feed the new bar, which you have resting right there, into this and put a couple screws in there just to secure it so it'll look just like it is right now. All right, removing the other two T25s.
Now I did this on a Harley I had, it was the first bike I had. And when I took this apart, there was a, uh, a wound up throttle cable that was a pain in the butt to put back on and it all popped off the, the spindle that it was on. It's not the case with the Indian. So this is actually a lot easier, but still having said that, like I said, hold everything together, slide the bars out of the way. Don't remove the handle and the control module from the bar. You're removing the bar from the control module. All right, you see how I did that? And now we just grab the other bar, feed it right in there. All right, and then rest it right back in the notched out area for now. And just get your screws back on. When you put the second screw in, just make sure before you tighten it down, you see I've got, a, there's a little gap right here where it's not quite flush together. So you're gonna wanna snap that together, line it up right before you put the screws back in. All right, so now this is secure and it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna make sure I've got the bar in there the right length and then proceed forward to the next step. All right, guys, so you may have seen the gap in this upper and bottom, uh, upper and lower portion here, and it didn't quite go together. And the reason being is I had forgotten when I had removed the old bars. Um, you see the little, we'll call it the nipple once again, sticking out of this. So that's in the way. So we have to drill a hole in that exact same spot into the bar to accommodate it so it'll close tightly. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so that hole from the lip or the insert right there to the center of the hole is one and five eighths. Now, I've got this bar, cause you're probably look, probably wondering, you know, where am I gonna put it? So I've got this bar laid out flat, okay? So there it is up, there it's flat. Now with it laid flat and you looking straight at it, that's where it should be not to the top of the bar at that angle. So with the bar laid flat, again, as you can see, you're gonna to wanna to be right in the center of the bar. And if you're a little off, it doesn't matter. That's not critical, okay? Just means that your, your uh, control module there is just gonna be rotated up or down a little bit, but that's one and five inches. Guys, if you're, not handy with this kind of stuff. It's not hard, but use a center punch. Don't try and drill straight into that and have that drill bit wander. So we're gonna mark a center punch onto the new bar. Guys, see this? This is what I call inconsistency in product. Same part number, same company. Now I bend the bars a little bit just on one side, but not like that. All right, guys, so I've marked my bars so when you're gonna drill the hole, use a center punch. Now they make these where you just hold it in place and whack the top with a hammer. This one's spring-loaded, I'll give you an example. Find a spot, push down, you'll hear it pop, and it makes a tiny little groove right there. So when you start off with that small bit, it will not wander, you'll just Drill right in, and that's what you need. Always use a center punch when you're using a smooth, flat surface like that, or even a round surface for that matter. Um, just less room for error. All right, guys, with my bars laid completely flat on this piece of wood, as you can see right here, I marked it, and that's where I used the center punch right there. Now I'm gonna drill that out with a real small bit, and then gradually go up to the larger bit, and I'll tell you what size it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my pilot hole. I'm gonna use a 332nd drill bit. As you can see, it's a real small one. It doesn't matter at this point, just as long as you've got a small enough uh, drill bit to pilot it. 
yeah, uh, you need to drill in not even a quarter of an inch because remember, all you got to do is accommodate the depth of that nipple that's on the control module. And you see, I've got my bars in a vise and it's protected with a cloth. And of course, you're removing the bit, checking your depth. You can push it all the way in, put your nail to the end and you can see how far I've gone. I think that's gonna be enough. So at that point, I'm gonna remove it, change the bit and uh, now I'm gonna do a, uh, let's see, 3 sixteenths is the size of the hole that was on my other bars. Make sure your bit is straight. that should do it if not well I guess we'll be making another video all right guys so right here was where that nipple was that's exactly where I, I drilled up in there and you can see how tight it is now it fits around there perfectly and so I just put the one screw in there one in there and then this leaves the perfect amount for your uh, brake lever okay so that's it for now uh, let me get my brain together and we'll go to the next step. Okay, guys, now is a, a good time to uh, go ahead and line up your, your bars. You can see that they've got the little uh, knurls in them. So that tells you where to center up in between the mount. I'm going to put the bezel back on. Um, if you're going to torque it to factory specs, um, it's 22 foot pounds. Um, I've been wrenching for a, for a little while, so I usually do it by feel. Um, but I advise you if you're not familiar with tensions and whatnot and tools, just follow the factory specs. I don't want to be responsible for uh, uh, anything that I tell you that uh, causes you any misfortune. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put that on and uh, we'll go to the next step. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on, but I'm not going to make it super tight because then I'm going to sit on the bike and actually rotate the bars and make sure I'm comfortable with the angle. Okay. Now all the screws are all the same uh, length and I'm just going to get them started and not worry about the handlebar position at this time. Now you don't want to crank down the front ones and then start working on the back ones. I try to do them evenly. And again, just loose so you can line everything up perfectly. You know, if you start sliding around your bars, you're going to scratch up the uh, powder coating. It's not the end of the world. You can always remove them. Of course, that's not the right one. Why would it be? Why would I be prepared? All right, so we can do this by hand for right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten those real quick somewhat and then get the bars lined up. Okay guys, so at this point I sat on the bike and I got everything uh, tightened on my uh, Speedo so the, the bars are secure. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't like the new angle of the bars. Uh, they're a little too straight for me, uh, but that's my problem, not yours. So let's move ahead. And now we're gonna put the, uh, the uh, brake back on as you can see the space right here once you've drilled um, that hole to accommodate the module here you've got the perfect amount of space as you'll see to put your brake back on and then we're going to put the back bracket on 
and screw everything into place. Let's see here. And I believe that was the five mil Allen wrench that we were using for this. Once you put this back on, remember there's that uh, wire harness that you gotta plug back in that we uh, removed in one of the first steps. And then that's really, that's this side complete. So as you can see, it's not that hard. And the brake banjo with the new bars clears the uh, top of the triple tree and the headlight bezel. So I didn't have to mess with that. Not that that would have been a big deal anyway, but it's good to know. All right, so I'm gonna tighten these down, guys, and then I'll get on to the left side. We are gonna to have to drill a hole on the other side too. And it's not so bad since the, the bars are already mounted, they're stable. So it's just like they're, you know, they're in a vise. And we'll go ahead and tighten that down and get the other side complete. Okay, guys, on the clutch side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna drill the hole, starting off with a small pilot hole. I used a center punch uh, to line it up. And we'll do the same thing, like I said. And again, measure your, your depth. And of course, you don't want to uh, drill too deep because you don't want to, um, you know, harm the uh, integ structural integrity of the bar. Uh, but on the instructions, it does tell you that you have to drill a hole uh, to accommodate the, uh, the little nub or nipple that's on that control module. So now I'm going to go ahead with the large drill bit, same size as that we did on the uh, brake side. And again, not too deep. Depth is good. And again, here I'm just gonna rotate it slightly just to make it big enough. So at this point, I'm actually going to go ahead and put on the, the uh, clutch lever. Now remember when I took off this bracket on the back side of this clutch lever, I had a little insert welded in there because it was rotating. Well, I had an extra uh, clamp replacement part and I'm going to use that instead. Now if this starts rotating, then I'll do the same process that I did uh, when I removed it. So I'm just gonna pause here for a second and go ahead and tighten that up. All right guys, so now we're gonna take the uh, control module right here. We're gonna replace it because I drilled the hole to accommodate it. And we're gonna go ahead and put the screws in the back. And remember this was the uh, T25 that we're gonna use on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that in there a little ways. Same on the bottom. And again, we're gonna line it up. So the notch on the back of the uh, back plate here fits in there and just tighten it down.
Now the next step we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna plug in the two uh, harnesses or the harness rather that goes to the bottom of this that we unplugged at the beginning step, just like we did on the brake side. And then we're gonna put the grip on. And then I'm gonna tell you some bad news that I'm not very happy about. All right. All right, so that's on there good and tight. Again, now we will uh, just put the grip on. I'm not gonna go through the process of gluing it on right now. Um, you can use whatever glue you want. It doesn't have to be the best glue in the world just to hold it on there nice and tight. So anyway, that's that complete. Let's go ahead and plug in the two wires that were on the back on the two pins. All right, make sure those are on there secure. All right, guys, so here is almost the finished product. Um, so just make sure that everything is tightened, especially the handlebars, that's, that's really important. Um, as you can see, it's a lot straighter than my previous bars. Um, but the problem that kind of ticked me off was, you'll notice I have no mirrors. Well, they, they drilled the wrong pitch thread so the, the bolts that go through to mount my bar and mirrors don't work. So I contacted Marcus at IndianAftermarket.com and uh, you know he assured me that he drilled them right and I assured him that he didn't and he, he was gracious enough to send me a set of new bars which I'll be receiving in the mail and in the meantime, well, I'll just be riding without any mirrors. Anyway, hope the video helped. Hit the like and subscribe button. Um, I wish you guys all the best in the new year, and if you have any questions, just hit me up, ride safe.